What's good? What's good? We're back. It was truly the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast. This is episode um, 132, 132 of Paul Pickett Podcast. Um, before I get started, first things first, I want to say rest in peace to the great DJ K Slay. Um, he passed away Easter Sunday. He's been battling um, three to four months of um, complications from COVID. And it pretty much, um, you know, um, took over in the long run and he passed away. Um, K. Slay was one of the most influential record breakers of my lifetime and in hip hop in general. Um, definitely had tons of influence, um, <clears throat> and one of the top record breakers. Um, I mean, like when you think about like getting just one person to break your record, I mean, he's like got to be at the top of the list. You know what I'm saying? Funk Flex, K, Funk Flex, K Slay. Um, these guys just have more power and influence to break records than most people on the planet, man. Um, or he did, you know. So rest in peace to K Slay. Um, just give a moment of silence for a second on the passing of K Slay. Rest in peace, K Slay. Um before I get started. Don't forget the video version of my podcast goes to Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube, Rumble, and we also take the video and we stream it on three of our Twitter accounts, which would be Twitter at Paul P Podcast, Twitter at Paul W Pickett, and Twitter at Promo Palace LLC. Sometimes we'll stream on Twitter at Indie Castle and Twitter at Urban Obsessions as well as I have um, five Twitter accounts. Also, don't forget the audio version of my podcast will be uh, uploaded to Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Stitcher, Slacker, iHeartRadio, Player FM, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, and much, much more so definitely follow us on all those platforms um first things first let me get into last night's nba scores philly beat toronto they're up 2-0 on toronto toronto definitely has a lot of injuries so i might see them winning a game if that um utah lost to dallas which is really crazy i i said if Dallas figures out a way to win a game while Luka's gone. Luka could come back and they could win this series because Luka's clearly will be the best player on the court if he's healthy in this series. And Donovan Mitchell, I mean, like, you know, Donovan Mitchell did his thing. But hold on, let me go over these box scores first. Toronto and Philly. Um, OG and OB put up 26 past Pascal 20. Fred Van Fleet Sixers did their thing pretty much. Danny, they all scored in double figures. Danny Green had 11 with two blocks, one steal, three assists, 20 points from Tobias Harris. So he's put up 20 points in both of these games with 10 rebounds and three blocks. So dudes are playing defense. Missed five blocks total right there from the forwards. 
Um, we got 31 out of Embiid and 11 rebounds. 23 points, 9 rebounds, and 8 assists from Tyrese Maxey. So he's definitely been doing his job so far in the playoffs. And James Harden just ain't looking the same. I mean, he put up 14, 6-6 six and six with 3 steals and 2 blocks. I mean, he played playing defense, you know. Um, then they didn't really get much off the bench, but they didn't need much off the bench. You got 23, 31, 20, 14, and 11 from the starters. And then you got two blocks, three blocks. You got literally, what do we got? Five, nine blocks from the starters and five still five steals, nine blocks from the starters. And then the points, man, you can't – there ain't much you're going to do with that, man. There's not much you're going to do with that. And you – Utah lost to Dallas because Jalen Brunson just like put up a forty piece wing dinner. Um, you got Ed points. I mean, you're not gonna win with that. You got twenty one from Jordan Clarkson, but I mean, he's the only guy coming off the bench doing anything. And then you got 41 piece wing dinner from Jalen Brunson and 25 from Maxi Keep. Ke- uh, <laughs> I was about to say Keebler. Maxi uh, Keeper. And then Spencer did when he put up 17. 41, five assists, eight rebounds, two steals from Brunson. Reggie Bullock put up 11, four assists, one steals, four rebounds. 17 points from Dinwiddie with six assists and two steals. And then 25, six from Keeper. good for Utah, man. Utah should have not. There's no way Utah should have lost that game. And then Golden State beat Denver. Uh, um, They got Steph. Curry coming up. Off the bench, man. I mean, enough. and 12 from whoever Bones Highland is. I mean, they just don't got enough, man. Nobody else scored 20. You needed like two or three players scored 20 points come playoff time. Especially when you got 21 from Clay, 29 from Jordan Poole, and 34 from Steph. Jordan Poole's averaging 30 points a game right now in the playoff. And I do think the Warriors are going to really, they're going to have a one of those good problems coming up soon when they're going to have to make a decision if they're going to keep Clay or Jordan. Because Jordan Poole is going to be due for a big contract here real soon. He keeps that up. All right, we got tonight's games. Are Atlanta, Miami. Um, it's going to be tough. I'm going to go with Miami. Minnesota, Memphis. Um, I'm going to go with Minnesota. I mean Memphis, but if Minnesota wins this game, the series is over. Memphis won't stand a chance. Phoenix and Orleans, and I'm going Phoenix. Um, I've seen something in the NFL, which before I get into that, let me uh, – we're going to upload a video, and we're going to give you – a word from one of our sponsors. Don't forget, hit that like, hit that share, hit comment, subscribe. Don't forget um, on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Rumble, Twitter, and more. But let's get into a word from our sponsor. Me and my team will never be link up. They're gonna be drink up. We sit down, relax, and have few glasses when there's things to think about. Like I'm nice with the boss when I tend to the boss and I'm not talking drink pops. So tell the bartender that tend to the bar to please pass me a big cup up. And tell the waitress that's waiting on us to put a little ice in it. Now watch the ice become weightless like the spaceships that I be sitting in. No waiting, listen, no waiting for that tropical twist. That'll kick in your taste buds. Now tell you so. Now I insist it's the
Check it out, dizzlebrand.com. Just add ice, dizzle on ice. Step into the future. Do you dizzle? Yes, I dizzle. Got a couple bottles in there right now. Um, you can order merchandise on there. Get the t-shirts, the hats, the hoodies. Um, also, go to dizzlebrand.com. Click on our locations in the top three links. You can order your very own bottle of dizzle as long as you're age 21 and up. And then there's a bunch of other locations in California. We just hit the Midwest as well for dizzlebrand.com. Check us out, dizzle. Um, I'm hearing that the Panthers are might be interested in Baker Mayfield. I've had a, I analyzed this, and um, apparently Robbie Anderson came out and commented on a post saying he don't want Baker there. Um, all due respect to Robbie Anderson. Um, who the fuck are you to act like you dictate a quarterback coming to any team in the NFL? Like, if you ain't made a Pro Bowl in your entire life, shut the fuck up thinking you dictate quarterbacks coming to a team. And all due respect to Robbie Anderson, Baker Mayfield is a better quarterback than Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold has yet to have a winning season. Sam Darnold has yet to make playoffs. Sam Darnold has yet to win half of his games in a season. So Baker Mayfield is clearly an upgrade. Now, is Baker Mayfield a long-term solution for Carolina Panthers? Probably not. But Baker Mayfield, having Christian McCaffrey and Robbie Anderson and who else, I would think the Panthers would be a hell of a lot better. They Right now, to be honest with you, it would be a smart move for the Panthers because it would at least should get them to number two in the NFC South behind the Buccaneers. They definitely should be better than the Atlanta Falcons and the Saints if they get Baker, May- Baker Mayfield. If they don't, if they keep Sam Darnold, I don't even know that we're, we're better than any of those teams. We might be third or fourth, but I think Baker Mayfield does keep us at second, possibly a wild card. Um, I think the Panthers should go for it. Even in, in, I really do. I think they should go for it. It can't be any worse than Sam Darnold. It's not like we're going to win any games this year with Sam Darnold. You can't keep waste. You can't waste too much of Christian McCaffrey before we have to trade him as well. So there's that. There's that. And if the Seahawks get him, then I mean, I don't know what the Panthers are going to do. I mean, I don't know that we're drafting a quarterback. Who knows? We might. Maybe we do draft Kenny Pickett. No relation. Kenny Pickett is no relation to yours truly, Paul Pickett. But we'll see. We'll see. We don't know how that's going to go. But um, I think that Carolina Panthers should roll the dice, go after Baker Mayfield. It should be considered an upgrade from Sam Darnold. It really should. And I don't even know why they went after Sam Darnold in the first place. What the hell were they thinking? These people in the in the pros that call themselves professionals, they they don't they're not experts. I could tell you that much. They might be professionals, but they sure as hell ain't experts. Because I mean, it didn't take a rocket scientist to realize Sam Darnold just ain't got what it takes. And I don't want to hear it's it's always the Jets because now they got a whole nother quarterback. And we'll, and let's see what he does this year. Um, let me go ahead and, um, pull up another video from one of our sponsors. And then I'm going to get into something that, um, just intrigued me while I was watching the Godfather of Harlem. But before I do that, let's get into a word from our sponsor. You a musician looking for music marketing and promotion? then look no further than Promo Palace LLC, your one-stop shop for all music promotion services. Services include Spotify playlist pitching, YouTube video promotion, record pool promotion, blog placements, radio airplay promotion, SoundCloud promotion, and much more. With over 2,000 customers and over 10 years of experience in online promotion, Promo Palace LLC is a company you can trust. For more info, please go to promopalace.biz. See you there. 
that is my lovely spokesperson for Promo Palace LLC. And yes, I own Promo Palace LLC. Uh, if you need online market promotions, go to promopalace.biz. Uh, we do SEO, social media ads, TikTok influencers, Instagram influencers, blog placements, press releases, playlist pitching, and much, much more. Um, it's going to be my last little topic. I'm going to keep this podcast kind of short. I was watching Godfather of Harlem. And in Godfather of Harlem, is, um, Malcolm X is, is in there heavily. Um, or, you know, an actor that plays M- Malcolm X in, in, in the show. And um, it just, you know, he was doing the ballot and the bullet speech on, on the Godfather of Harlem. And, and it really made me think, um, who, do I, who did I kind of agree with more between Malcolm and and Martin, and I have to agree with Malcolm a little more. I understand Martin, um, as a friend of mine told me, he got a lot of his um, his views from Gandhi, which was a very peaceful thing. But I think about Mark, Malcolm and um, the ballot or the bullet. And I think about um, how Martin really wasn't about violence. He was more peaceful. But Malcolm was like, you know, you f- more like, you fight fire with fire, meaning you fight violence with violence. And I have to agree with that. Like, you know, as talking to a friend about this, you know, this idea that if somebody punches you in the face or smacks you in the face, you turn the other cheek is just so bogus. It's so made up fairy tale. It's not even reality. Like, there's really only two options when somebody attacks you, somebody assaults you. You either run or you defend yourself. That's it. There's no third option. You run like a coward or you man up or woman up, adult up, and defend yourself. You know, um, this idea that somebody inflicts violence on you and your response is to just let them continue to conflict, inflict violence on you is so idiotic to me so moronic it's 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 so coward like um it's so weak minded it it's so pathetic it's so miserable of a mindset i mean if somebody assaults you with violence um you defend yourself with violence you don't turn the other cheek and, and let them just keep smacking you and assaulting you. And this idea that a person should just let somebody commit violence on them and not defend themselves or try to flee from the violence is so pathetic to me. It's so stupid, idiotic, and moronic. It's not even how reality works. If somebody assaults you, you do what you have to get away from the salt or you do what you have to defend yourself. And if your life depends on it, then it's kill or be killed. It's fight fire with fire, not get a bucket of water, you know? So I I agree with Malcolm. Also agree with Malcolm on this sense that, um, the black, I, I don't have a respect for a black man who prays to a white Jesus. Um, I agree that with Malcolm that um, a black man should not be worshiping to the um, religion and God of their oppressors. When the religion was used, it, first of all, when their oppressors force Christianity upon them, they put their little twists and turns on it. The slave the slave masters, the slave owners put their um, little twist and turn on the Christianity and you know um, no black man should be praying to a white Jesus. I don't pray to a white Jesus because first of all if Jesus was real or is real was or is real, and he comes from 
the area that the Bible said he comes from, there is no white men there. There was Arabs and black men there. So there's that. So if Jesus is or was real, he sure as hell wasn't white. And, you know, that's it. So I agree with Malcolm that the black man should not be um, praying to a white Jesus. Now, do I think Islam's any better? No, it's it's, it's hypocritical as well. as this, But, um, you know, black Americans weren't enslaved by Islamic people and Muslim people in America. They were enslaved by hypocritical so-called fake Christians, you know? So, yeah, there's that. I agree with Malcolm that um, the black man should not be worshiping a white Jesus, which is the God and religion of the oppressor, their, of their ancestors' oppressor. You know, in Africa, they wasn't praying to a white Jesus. And I don't know exactly what they were praying to. You know, it could have been, you know, more of praying to many gods or who knows, you know, could have been more like on the sense of voodoo or anything, you know, but I just know that it wasn't Jesus that Africans were praying to and that they worshiped to and they believed as God, you know? So I do believe with, I do agree with Malcolm more than I did Martin. And, you know, um, it was really fucked up what happened to both of them because, um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Martin Luther King Jr. was um, assassinated by the white man, you know, um, basically making the call on to assassinate him. And Malcolm was assassinated by um, black people within the nation of Islam, you know, because, um, yeah, they... they they viewed him to be a hypocrite for calling out hypocrisy. But, you know, you're not necessarily a hypocrite when you call out hypocrisies. You know, I mean, and yes, he did have a more violent approach or wanted to have a more violent approach. Um, You know, fight fire with fire. And that's what you do. You fight fire with fire. You know, um, when it comes to violence, you don't go get a bucket of water, try to put out a fire. And sometimes that don't even work. Sometimes the fire, it makes the fire spread even more, you know? So, um, yeah, I agree with Malcolm on more than I did Martin. And both of them were great people, especially for their times. Um, they both tried to accomplish great things. Um, they both were, I guess, deemed as a threat. They were both deemed as a threat. Um, yeah, the ballot of the bullet, man. Um, you know, I don't really, I don't know that um, the any one vote makes a difference or votes make a difference. Um, especially the way the politics is set up with the electoral votes and stuff like that. But yeah, basically that was just what I got from watching the Godfather of Harlem and just um, Malcolm X character in there. Um, or the, you know, the actor just playing Malcolm X in there. He did a great job as well. He looked just like um, Malcolm probably even more than um than Denzel did. And he probably I probably would say he did a probably a better job of playing that role than Denzel. But I I think I agree with Malcolm a little more, you know. Um, there's I'm pretty sure there's some things I know there's things I do agree with Martin on, but when it comes to like you know, violence with violence, fire with fire and um you know, turning the cheek and Praying, you know, because even though Martin prayed to a white Jesus, 
he got most of his influence from Gandhi, which was a peaceful man. But, you know, that's just not always the case, man. It's, turning the other cheek is, is just not the smartest thing to do when somebody's just continuously committing violence on you, you know. And you can't just sit there and let somebody could just continuously commit violence on you without defending yourself or without running from it. You know, and sometimes it takes violence to conquer violence, to stop a violence, to eliminate the violence that's being placed upon you. You know, I mean, a, to me, a person who just lets violence be um, placed upon them and doesn't try to defend themselves is a willing victim. You're a willing victim. You're a willing participant of victimhood. Like, you are basically wanting to be a victim, asking to be a victim, because, I mean, you have to defend yourself or run away from violence. If not, you'll become a victim of violence. And if people know they can exhibit violence on you and they can dictate you and dominate you with violence and control you with violence and scare you and fear you with violence and, you know, have their will over you with violence, they will, will continue to do that. Especially a person who just always uses violence to um, put fear in, into people, to control people, to dictate and conquer people. You know, so yeah, I agree with I agree with Malcolm more than I did Martin. Um, you got to fight fire with fire when it comes to violence. You know, if not, people will continuously exhibit violence over you. And you know, everybody, the laws of nature, screw the laws of man. The laws of nature always say that when somebody, you know, commits violence on you. By any means necessary, you know, what you have to do to defend yourself, you know, because you never know the intentions of people. That's the thing. You can never know the intentions of people. You know, it's like I know they want you to know the the um, pronouns of a complete stranger, but it's, it's, it's complete horseshit. It's like you, it's the same way, like. It's a complete stranger. You can never know anybody's intentions if you never know them. If you know nothing about them, you can never know a person's intentions. And that's a big thing to know when you're talking about violence. What is a person's intentions when they're committing violence? Do they intend to harm you, kill you? Do they tend to just humiliate you? You know, if they tend to kill you, then you do what you have to by any means necessary. And, he, you know, so, yeah, man. Um, the ballad of the bullet, I agree with, my, I agree with Mal Malcolm all day, every day, you know. So that's that. And that's coming from the perspective of a Caucasian male, a Anglo-Saxon Caucasian male with Irish and Scottish Dutch ancestry and maybe more, who knows? Because we all come from somewhere else beyond America. We all have ancestors that come from Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, you know, that side of the world before America was discovered. And not to mention, every, one out of every 200 people is related to Genghis Khan, you know? So there's that as well. So there's a lot of people fighting that's just related. <laughs> All right, well, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Um, this was episode 132. And before I go, let me pull up a commercial for my podcast, the Paul Pickett Podcast. And then we're going to leave it. It's your boy, the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast. 
aka Triple P, That's aka me. the Common Sense Podcast, your source for music, sports, politics, world events, and more. Please check me out three to four days a week on my video podcast on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Rumble. And check out the audio version on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Stitcher, Slacker, iHeartRadio, Player FM, and much more. Peace. See you there. You heard it from the horse's mouth. The one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, episode 132. I want to thank you for tuning in. Peace. And I-